met with both President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. For more on this, let's welcome in Georgia Congressman Buddy Carter. Congressman, first of all, thank you so much for joining us here on Wake Up America weekend. Um, I want to jump right in these protests. They were on the same exact day, obviously, as President Biden claimed Republicans were a threat to democracy. Republicans were actually seen raising the American flag. Uh, let's just talk to us about that a little bit, please. First of all, we are not going to be intimidated by these anti-Semitic uh, people and, and, and their views here. Look, we support Israel. America supports Israel. I thought Netanyahu did an excellent job when he addressed Congress. I, I thought it was one of the most inspirational and best speeches that I've heard as a member of Congress, and I, I compliment him on that and applaud him for that. But this that's going on, these protests, they have every right to protest. We, we understand that. But burning the American flag, replacing the American flags at Union Station with Palestinian flags, that is unacceptable. And by the way, one of my colleagues who, who had a sign during during the during the speech, that was unacceptable as well. Yeah, that was that was uh, interesting. Bad form. I I was surprised she was there, to be honest. And if she was going, I expected her to make a little bit more noise, not just stand there with her. I'm, I'm sure that uh, she was warned that she would be asked to leave and not make a spectacle. But it was de it was definitely not comporting with a member of Congress at a joint yeah. session, regardless if you might disagree with someone's policy. He's a guest in our chamber, and we need to show that respect as Americans. Yeah. Now, let's. these protests, though, it took Kamala Harris 18 hours to condemn them. And they were going on just outside. It was, you know, it was some of the most horrifying protests I've seen, and I've seen a lot. Uh, do de are the Democrats doing enough to ensure that anti-Semitism isn't spreading an anti-Israel, anti-American hatred? They're not doing enough, and certainly Vice President Harris is not doing enough. Where was she at, by the way, on Wednesday during the joint session? Why wasn't she presiding? I mean, you know, I, I don't care what's on your calendar. This should have taken precedent, and she should have been there. But then her response, her delayed response, unacceptable again. Look, this is serious. What's going on in the Middle East and what's going on with Iran— the United States of America has got to take this seriously. Thank goodness Israel's taking it seriously. And if our leaders don't start taking it seriously, this is why we are perceived as being weak on the world stage because of this administration and their reaction to things just like this. No, I think you're, you're dead on there, Congressman. Uh, we only have about a minute left. You know, as the presumptive nominee, Kamala Harris looks like she's closing the gap a bit on Trump in recent nationwide polls. Do you think that um, she poses a, a major threat to a second, Trump, a second term for Trump? Or is this just the bump that we would expect with the media, you know, putting wind in her sails, you know, basically covering up her entire history? You know, they're trying to deny her record in California prior to becoming the vi a senator and as senator and as vice president. She's got a lot of history there. I don't think they're going to be able to cover it up for much longer. I mean, you're not. She, she's in a honeymoon period. There's no question about that. And look, if she is vetted, then the American voters will see just how liberal she is. And let's not forget, she was the border czar. We got the worst border we've ever had, and she was in charge for three and a half years. That's all you got to say. But these have been the Biden-Harris policies that we've suffered through for the last three and a half years. Her fingerprints are all over the high inflation. Her fingerprints are all over the border. Her fingerprints are all over our weak perception on the world stage. Her fingerprints are all over crime in our cities. She cannot escape that. Before we let you go, Congressman, unfortunately we are out of time already, but I really want to ask you about this because uh, you called for bipartisan health care reform. And as part of that, you shared a story about 15-year-old Matty from Georgia. So what can, you, what can you tell us about him? Well, Matty served, uh, he suffers from a genetic disorder. He was denied his medication after he'd already been on it for two years under control. And once he was denied his medication by the PBM, he ended up in the hospital and almost died. We were able to get that reversed by the PBM, thank goodness. But it shouldn't take an act of Congress, mm -hmm. by a member of Congress, bringing attention to it in order to get this done. People are suffering right now, every day, as a result of the egregious practices of PBMs the middlemen that are causing drug prices to go up. Yeah. yeah. Well, Congressman, we're all going to 
Uh, pray for Maddie, yeah. and, and may he stay strong and healthy, and we appreciate your work on such an important issue. Congressman Buddy Carter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.